and which interest were paying out of circulation as it counted none against any prior sum of debt has to be borrowed back into circulation as new debt above the prior sum of debt which therefore increases debt by so much as periodic interest on an ever greater sum of debt. The odds aren't 50% that the recession will deepen. They're 100%. Since it began, it has only deepened at an escalating rate. And all these ideas about recovery are mere further falsifications as we are witnessing right here before us. The article goes on, it says, economies have a strong self-reinforcing nature. That's, that's the second sentence of the same article. How could you give a bigger lie? A self-reinforcing nature? Anything you call an economy, which can only multiply completely redundant cost upon you, to mere publishers of evidence of our promissory obligations is not an economy at all. Moreover, it has no strength. In fact, it's subject to a process which can only perpetually weaken it to an ever greater extent. Yet this sentence says, economies which is a lie, have a strong self-reinforcing nature, <laughs> which is the exact opposite of the truth. When people are optimistic, they spend. Oh, okay, if that's so. All right, let's all just put on a happy face and spend. You don't have anything to spend. Why don't you have anything to spend? Because you're in the indebtedness to which you are subject has overtaxed you. And it can only get worse. But this article is saying when people are optimistic, they spend, which begets hiring and then more spending. Well, this lie is one that Barack Obama promised to indulge in two days ago. He promised to spend, uh, if we pass this right away, which he said over and over again, uh, he promised to spend $450 billion into circulation. So there you have optimism, right? And he's going to spend this money into circulation and supposedly create jobs. When in truth, by uh, reducing taxes to employers and whatnot, who can't make any money because the market has no money and that's why everything is gone to hell in a handbag here. Um, yet somehow they're just going to hire. Okay. Well, this $450 billion just spent into circulation as a debt subject to interest, which means we're going to have to spend more of it out of circulation than once introduced into circulation. And we're going to do this in short order because we are subject to a terminal sum of indebtedness already, which means we're paying everything we can get our hands on out of circulation to the purported banking system from whom we have to borrow it back into circulation because there isn't even any production relative to this for them to purchase if it if they could even consume so much of our production as to sustain a circulation otherwise so uh we have this presidential debate and uh the GOP is dedicated to making Obama a one-term president without a birth certificate and yet why? Uh, you know, I had thought and uh, I got distracted into several other discussions this morning. And so I, I, I really don't have time to do this. But in truth, I think uh, uh, it, it, it wouldn't really have served the purpose unless we made a four hour, five hour, six hour documentary out of this. Um, I recorded the uh, the GOP debate. Probably we could 
benefit from discussing certain ostensible highlights of it, but nonetheless, it comes down to this. One of the questions which was asked was about job stimulus, economic stimulus. Um, and uh, Governor Perry and Governor Romney uh, claim to have created jobs. And this is, these, this is a proposition which is raised practically without objection. I will say practically because Ron Paul objects to it, um, and rightly so. But it's not the responsibility of government to create jobs. Why we have a need for, or, or a perceived need, a misperceived need for government to create jobs or to stimulate the lie of economy is government has imposed the lie of economy upon us. They have imposed this banking system, which is a conspiracy against every people in the world. They have imposed it upon us. Now, if we were genuine engineers of a solution to our problem, the first thing that would be incumbent upon us would be to properly identify the problems, layoffs, housing data, chronic problems. What are the chronic problems? We have to be explicit. We have to take each case, what has happened here, the, uh, the cost of houses has exceeded our ability to afford them. Meanwhile, while we had a job, we don't have a job, further making it impossible to afford houses. So we have, you know, an ongoing year after year after year of 10,000 homes a day going into foreclosure. What is the root of the problem? In order to find the root of the problem, of any problem, you go back to its earliest possible beginning and you trace it forward until you identify not just the first issue that you come across, but you bore into every relevant detail of it until you have the whole picture. Then you resolve the issue as engineers would. But we don't have engineers in government, although the responsibility of government is in fact to engineer solutions to problems. Not to stimulate the victim who is being killed by the disease we've given the victim. You break their arms and legs, you don't say, well, we'll give you a part of the cast for one of your arms. You don't break their arms and legs. Government is a perpetrator of this crime against the people. So how do we get beyond this is really where we're heading here. Uh, problems are problems. You don't close your eyes and you pretend that they're not there. That isn't a positive outlook. Optimism comes from knowledge of the way to solve the problem that exists. And the problem is this crime. Now, yet we had in the Republican GOP debate GOP stands for you foreigners uh, who may or may not know. Grand Old Party. It's a nickname for the Republican Party. Um, which is supposed to be what we call conservative. In truth, what we mean by conservative is um, a belief in limited government, absolute fiscal responsibility principle. Now, in truth, 
originally probably the Democrat Party was interested in the same principles, which are vital to um, um, any and every republic. Theoretically, you can't have a government which uh, or a political party which which believes in the form of government that serves the people which could be what we would consider non-conservative or liberal and most then a purported democrat party as it is in this country which we would consider the liberals generally um, can't really stray from the same principles. But the truth of the matter is, both parties have totally strayed from the principles, and even people that belong to either party are only hoping that somehow that party returns to principles which can serve us. And what this comes down to is this obfuscation of the currency. Now, Republicans should have found it offensive here in the United States that uh, it was even discussed that the government create jobs. The fundamental principles of the Republican Party are a belief in limited government. As Thomas Jefferson put it, that government is best which governs least. In other words, if possible, we eliminate government at all. Now, While that may be considered to be a lofty goal by some people, in truth, under mathematically perfected economy, it's an actual accomplishment because the people are the rightful issuers of money. The only rightful privatization is the people. They determine the circulation by the need for circulation and which is restricted by their creditworthiness. And so... Uh, owing to an eradication of interest or exploitation and an obligatory schedule of payment, we resolve all of the issues before us. End of debate. Now, what's happened in, and as you can see this in in the uh, GOP debate just the other day, Wednesday, is we have... uh, these emerging Tea Party and Ron Paul factions, which aren't truly in agreement except in terms of objects. And I agree with the objects, um, and that is uh, elimination of government debt. Under mathematically perfected economy, government debt is eliminated. And in fact, in the transition to mathematically perfected economy from the present imposed banking systems, uh, practically all federal debt would have been eliminated because we are counting all prior payments of interest instead toward principal, which would reverse the conversion of interest into principal and further amassing of debt, which occurs uh, under this obfuscation of the currency. So simply by going back in time and rectifying the nature of the currency through time, uh, we, we resolve debt, which is the only just process, of course. Yet, uh, Ron Paul has no proposition except just ignoring it. Well, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a, uh, usually interpreted by most people to be a preposterous thing. And it is a preposterous thing to just assert abandoning the debt without qualification. And this is why these off, this, these arguments, these irrefutable arguments of one mathematically perfected economy are in fact so important, vital to the objects of the Tea Party and uh, the Ron Paul campaign as well. In other words, mathematically perfected economy accomplishes the purposes of the, of the Ron Paul campaign and of the Tea Party. 
But likewise, why isn't everyone um, endorsing Ron Paul or the Tea Party or some candidate they're 